Hey guys, it is time for the buzzword for today. And you know that there are a lot of things in our personal lives, in, in our country, in our world that can really cause us some great anxieties. You got sickness, you got bills that come in every week, every month. You have things to worry about in your family. You want to make sure that your children grow up uh, to be all that God wants them to be. Because there's just so many things that you can really uh, worry about and focus on. And you begin to just get fearful about life and fearful about your future, fearful about your family. And today in Psalm 118, we're going to look at the psalm that is written. They don't know exactly who wrote this particular psalm. Some say that maybe David wrote it. Some say maybe Moses wrote it as a reflection upon God's deliverance uh, through the Passover and God's deliverance through bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. Some say that maybe he was reflecting upon that. Not too sure who exactly wrote this particular psalm, but we do know that most psalms were written, if not all of them, to be sang. So this is a great song, and songs have been written with this refrain in them, and, and you'll catch it in just a minute. Uh, we'll look at verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Some translations say his mercy endures forever. Okay, we, we've all heard that great song that many people sing in church. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. He is good. We, 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 we sang that song. And the very interesting thing about Psalm 118 is it begins with that verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And it closes with that same refrain that the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And then you go on to verse 2. It says, let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron, this is the priestly class, let the priests say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord, all those that reverence the Lord and who are followers of the Lord, the people of the Lord, the saints of the Lord, whatever description you want to, to add there, let those that worship the Lord all together say, His steadfast love endures forever. And then we have in verse 5 a personal testimony. Yes, we, we know that God's steadfast love endures forever but the writer of this psalm gives a personal testimony to that in verse 5 it says out of my distress i called on the lord the lord answered me and set me free now how many of y'all out there have that kind of person that personal testimony that there was a moment in your life and yes your salvation is a very great example of this. That moment in your life where you were in great distress, you called to the Lord, you know for a fact that the Lord answered you and set you free from whatever it was, whether it was your sin at salvation, God forgave you and set you free from that, or whether it's an addiction to something, whether it be drugs or alcohol, pornography or some other thing in your life but whatever you've, you've gone through you have a personal testimony that God has been there for you before right and if God has been there for you in the past his steadfast love endures forever therefore he's still going to be there for you today and that's kind of what the writer of this song went on to express in verse 6 the Lord's on my side. I will not fear because his steadfast love endures forever. The writer says, I won't fear. And then he asks the question, what can man do to me? And I want you to think about that for just a minute. Man can do a lot to you, can't they? 
They can send you a bill. Uh, they can give you a bad diagnosis. Uh, they can put bombs in trash cans in New York and attempt to, to take people's lives. Uh, they can stab you at a mall in Minnesota. I mean, there's a lot of things that man can do to you. So I, I know this seems like a weird question, but let's take it in, in, the, in context here of your whole life and of your spiritual being. What can man do to you that could ever separate you from the love of God? What could man do to you that could ever take your salvation away from you? So there is nothing that anyone can do to you, even if they take your very life. What can man do to you? They cannot condemn you to hell. And even in scripture says, don't fear those that can do stuff to your body, but fear the one who can put both soul and body in hell. And the one that we should fear and reverence is the Lord. But we shouldn't be afraid of what man can do to us. You may be walking down the road tomorrow and a bomb may go off in the trash can. It may take your life. That is what man did to you physically, but they can never take away God's love for you. They can never take away your relationship with Jesus Christ, and they can never take away your assurance that when you leave this life, you're going to be with Jesus. So the writer says, what can man do to me? A lot, but not enough to really amount to anything to be fearful of. The Lord is on my side as my helper. I look in triumph on those who hate me. Now we know we live in a world of terrorism and we know that people hate us. People hate Christians. People hate those that don't follow Islamic extremism and they hate us. But this says, I will look triumphantly on those who hate me. Why? Because God's steadfast love endures forever and that I know that God has delivered me before and I know that God's going to continue to preserve my life. And if a terrorist takes my life, I look him in the face with triumph and I will not fear because God's steadfast love endures forever. Now, we shouldn't trust in anyone else. That's what this song goes on to say, because a lot of you want to trust in the politicians to get us out of this mess or, or some uh, savior to come riding in on a horse to save the day. It says here in verse eight, it's better to take refuge, shelter, refuge for protection uh, in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So there's a lot to be fearful about, but we can't trust in man to take away our fears. We can't trust in a presidential candidate to take away our fears. We cannot trust in our wives or our husbands to take away our fear, our children, our government. We must trust in the one whose love endures forever towards his people. So I don't know what you're fearing today, whether it's a bad diagnosis from your doctor, a bill that you're expecting to come just any day, uh, a litigation that's against you, uh, a divorce that is, is on the verge of taking place in your life, and, and you're fearful over that, fearful over what's gonna happen with your child at school or with the world of terrorism, take heart that the God whose love endures forever loves you if you know Jesus and he's there for you. He's your helper. He's your refuge. And what can you, why should you fear what man can do to you? They can hurt the body, but they can't separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's your word for the day. Have a great day. Enjoy life. Love the Lord. Now I'm going to buzz off. See ya.